Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six and all the main sites. Welcome to another EPL breakdown for the match week 30, March 9th, 2019. Pretty crazy that we're already into the 30s for the match weeks now and we're plowing through March. So yeah, let's uh, jump right into the slate here, break down the schedule. First game of the slate, we have have West Ham making the trip from London uh, into Wales to play Cardiff. Second game, we have Bournemouth making the trip from the south coast to Huddersfield to play Huddersfield Town. Fulham making the trip from London uh, over to Leicester in the third game of the slate. Fourth game, we have Everton making the trip from Liverpool uh, on east uh, over to Newcastle uh, to play Newcastle United. Spurs making the trip from London down to the South Coast to play Southampton uh, in the fifth game of the slate. And in the final game of the slate, we have Watford making the trip from London up into Manchester to play the blue side of Manchester City. So yeah, very quickly, a couple things I want to touch on before we break down into the games here. The first thing is that this is actually a really ugly slate. Spurs and Manchester City are both playing underwhelmingly at the moment, if you want to put it that way. And neither team necessarily justified their attacking salary. Uh, defensively, there can be a lot of arguments made for both teams. And generally, whenever Man City's defense is the better option of the two, that should be putting up a lot of red flags as to how much exposure you actually want this weekend. And considering they're the late game, their starters are a little bit up in the air, it's tough uh, to know exactly where to go on Man City this weekend. The second thing I want to talk about very quickly is on DraftKings, the range between 4.5 and 5K is absolutely loaded this late jacked full of guys for either format that you're going to be able to use so while this is like i just mentioned a game <clears throat> excuse me a slate where man city and spurs aren't that attractive one, you can either have no issue getting as many of them into your cards as you want for either format in reality. And two, this may even be a slate where you might want to, in GPP, leave serious amounts of salary still on the table. Uh, in the case that you are fading both Spurs and Man City, which this slate does offer some different alternatives to those two teams, which I'll be very surprised if they don't draw upwards of 40% ownership each. So yeah, let's uh, jump right into this slate First game of the slate, we have West Ham making the trip uh, to Cardiff. So yeah, West Ham are actually coming into this in really good form, except away from home, they just haven't been as good this season. They've only lost one of their five previous games, but they're winless in five straight English Premier League away games, losing four of the five. Now, they've won only four of their 14 away games this season, losing half of those at seven. So that's a really unappealing statistic. When we're thinking about West Ham's best options, slate to slate, it's always Fabanski. It's always the defense and ever we consider that they've lost at least half of their away games this season that's a concern even going into such a team against Cardiff who would actually lend more towards a GPP script in that scenario so yeah it's tough over the over their uh, five away games that they lost they only scored one goal and that's kind of the running theme for this game is that how many goals can West Ham score and it isn't a scenario where we're looking at this like Man City or Liverpool where we're saying, oh, wow, they could score upwards of five goals this game. That isn't the case at all. West Ham just simply have not been scoring away from home. So uh, that lends itself two ways. Either firstly, Cardiff isn't a very good team. West Ham should be able to score for, from moderate to low ownership. Uh, but the second, the se second way to approach this is that Cardiff clean sheet chase being really cheap and super uh, low owned may be the better DFS option. Is the, is it the better real life result option? Probably not. But in terms of uh, the, what the DFS world is giving us here, the card of clean sheets actually pretty interesting. So I, I have a pretty half mind here to just fade the offense for West Ham. A lot of that has to do with their minutes. And I'll, I'll show that here as we, we rip through here. I guess we could start even with Fabanski. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking that uh, they do have, I should should say generally speaking i don't want to talk about fabanski yet they've never lost to cardiff uh, every and now cardiff is still a fairly new english premier league team but at the same time it still speaks volumes when west ham hasn't dropped a single point to them yet in three straight games so yeah i i do like fabanski though he is too expensive for me this slate there's a really good chance he's finishing single digits if he concedes 
uh, then he's absolutely finishing single digits and in a range of single digits that you would lose from 5K on DraftKings, where at the same time, if he concedes and still wins, uh, he'll be very hard pressed to push uh, double digits because Cardiff very simply don't take that many shots even at home. Uh, so yeah, Pabanski is a little bit too expensive for my taste. But that being said, <clears throat> with uh, Aaron Cresswell slowly starting to come back into form as a relative cash play. And for people that may be unfamiliar with Aaron Cresswell, in seasons past, he was one of those guys that was pumping in double-digit crosses literally on the regular every single slate. So that obviously hasn't taken place this season, and he's been a little bit more subdued. But when you look, he actually has a really solid floor. 4.5K isn't that big of an ask at all. So I don't mind Cresswell for either format. Uh, you can either put him in there by himself, chase uh, with Fabanski if you want to chase a card of clean sheet. That isn't even the craziest option this slate. And from only 5K, the, the big red warning flag should be for everyone that West Ham is just a much worse away team than a home team, and they are away. So you're kind of flipping a coin here as to uh, whether or not they're going to, to uh, win an away game. And I know that that's a little bit of a hyperbole considering how bad Cardiff is so uh, I'm not necessarily jumping on the boat yet but uh, the big concern for me on West Ham is not only their salaries but their minutes that tuck in with their salaries so Antonio is getting 90 minutes uh, which is useful but he didn't even play last game and he, he's kind of off and on in terms of when he does start uh, Snodgrass sees 90 minutes, but again, isn't guaranteed to start every game, much like Antonio. And while I don't mind Snodgrass from 7.4K, I think there's better options for cash. And for GPP, I think you can find better than Snodgrass. But he is definitely, he checks the boxes for cash. He is a cash player. Uh, it's just not really my taste for him this late, uh, especially from these salaries. Now, the first guy I want to talk about, in this range of salaries that is just mind-blowing to me where it's just so jam-packed like I I'm actually legitimately excited to play this weekend because of this salary range it com it nullifies the ugliness of the overall upper salaries uh, I am really interested this slate in uh, Lanzini at 4.4k for GPP this is not a cash play I repeat do not play Lanzini in cash he's strictly a GPP play but Matthew Lanzini Lanzini is a legitimate world-class player who has the full capability to not only break a slate, to break a game by himself, and he has the star power to actually to score a goal by himself. To, as I say, the anti-Harry Kane. Uh, Lanzini can, can pick the ball up at half, dribble by four or five people, and score a goal. Now, is he going to do that literally this slate? No, he's probably still a month shy away from getting to that form. But at the same time, if you're willing to play O's after literally months and months of horrible play at this kind of salary, then there's no reason you shouldn't have at least a slight interest in Lanzini at the 4.4K on DraftKings for GPP. Excellent play going up. He should be playing 90 minutes, and he's playing against uh, one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, so, yeah, I really don't mind that. Even away from home, uh, if I was to go with anyone in GPP, it would be Lanzini's salary. Now, for the most part, there's just uh, minutes concerns and starting concerns for me. Uh, again, uh, Philippe Anderson isn't a bad play, uh, especially from 5.5K. He's getting to that range, but he doesn't cross the ball uh, quite as much as, for example, someone like Cresswell. You can get the exact same floor from Aaron Cresswell uh, for 1000 less. So, yeah, it's just, uh, again, is uh, is Anderson a bad play or player? Not necessarily, but is he a good play or as good of a play, uh, even for 5.5K? No. Uh, you could maybe get him in some GPP, but I would rather just, again, go cheaper with Lanzini. So, yeah, there's just better plays to me than uh, Fleet. Anderson and uh, up front it's kind of the same scenario uh, where you're looking at really rough minutes 
and when you're chasing goals this is usually the place you want to go uh, on West Ham is uh, well on most teams is forward so West Ham just don't have solid 90 minute forward options that's why if I was to go anywhere it would definitely be the midfield it would definitely be someone like Snodgrass and Cash and Lanzini and GPP uh, but yeah that's really my West Ham my West Ham players and in terms of Cardiff, like I mentioned, they are one of the worst teams in the league. They've lost three straight. They've lost six out of their previous ten. They've won only three of those ten. Uh, they've won only one of their previous six home games. And five of their seven, uh, however, I should say, excuse me, five of their seven wins this season have come at home. So, by default, they are a much better home team than they are away. So, when we are looking for a result, it is rather pointless to look at them when they are away and way more relevant when they are at home and they are going up against a team that is much better or much worse away from home excuse me than uh than away so yeah um Cardiff does have some relevance in that sense uh they've won and lost five of their previous 11 EPL home games uh, but uh, the, like I mentioned, they, they have lost three straight of their games to West Ham. It, it really isn't an ideal matchup in terms of history, but they may be catching West Ham on the down right now. As I mentioned earlier, West Ham haven't been scoring in any kind of a fashion. So by default, we can expect this to probably be a low-scoring game because Cardiff isn't exactly a team to consistently go out and score that many goals or multiple goals. So I do like Etheridge from a GPP standpoint this late. Um, if you want to be risky, you could probably go with him in cash and really rest on the, your laurels of West Ham just being really bad away from home uh, and not scoring. Uh, whether it's no goals or one goal, either or, Etheridge will probably still pay off from 4.4k. At least he's at the salary range where he can pay off with these limited number of saves. Where, uh, contrary to that, someone like Fabanski uh, would would not pay off from that 600 more on DK. So uh, I think Etheridge has more of a clean sheet chase than Fabanski. He has more saves coming his way than Fabanski. He has a really good shot at winning as good as a sh as good as a shot. Very close. Very, very close. And uh, I, I ownership, I see Etheridge being far, far low owned, uh, whether comparison to Vabansky or just in general. So yeah, I, I do like Etheridge uh, an awful lot this slate. I'd probably just keep him to GPP though. Uh, Joe Bennett is someone you can use in cash, whether uh, you want to use him as a low floor option or chase him with Eth Etheridge and try and catch this in cash as a, a really r risky but a low owned, low salary cash option at the back where you're probably looking at 10 to 15 fantasy points between the two of them, which uh, isn't really that bad from uh, from their combined 8.7. You'd probably want the, the 16 to 18 combined, but uh, in cash you'll take the 15 combined. That, that it would be more than enough uh, to allow you to spend up on the 7 8k guys in the midfield uh but yeah you you may even want to take a spin with uh Sol Bamba's uh center back replacement West Ham haven't been very capable at dealing with crosses throughout the season so I really don't mind that idea and uh trying to get a set piece goal now that comes with this uh debate further is uh Camarasa from 6.1k absolutely in play this slate uh whether you want to use them in cash or gpp i don't uh my, I, I definitely prefer them for cash uh for gpp you're asking a lot and the real reason you'll be using him in gpp is just his salary at 6.1 opens you to a different uh range that a lot of people won't be picking at the 6k range so yeah i, I don't mind uh camarasa for cash he's definitely checks all the boxes and he is more than cheap enough uh compared to He's going to do all the same things that the seven point whatever guys do, but uh, from a thousand dollars cheaper. Now to further that down, and a second guy I want to talk about in this uh, four point uh, four point five to five k ish range is if you're not comfortable playing Camarasa and Joe Rawls is starting. 
uh, absolutely uh, relevant playing Joe Rawls this slate, either format 4.5k. I would prefer him again for cash, but you can definitely get away with playing him in GPP just because he is so cheap. And if you happen to get double digits, you're clearing uh, from that salary range this slate. So yeah, uh, ideally you want to eight to ten fantasy points from him in cash, but if you get uh, into the double digits, uh, you'll be doing very well with him. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's really where I'm at with those two. Cameras is and Rouse are way too cheap. I wouldn't feel comfortable playing both of them in cash, one or the other. Uh, maybe play two cash cards this slate and use one in each uh, and try and use them as uh, different salary pivots. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the most part on Cardiff, uh, you're not going to find a guy who plays 90 minutes. So I'm not really that interested. Uh, even for the Canadian uh, Junior Hullet, not uh, interested. Josh Murphy is a sub or doesn't play 90 minutes. Uh, Mendez Lang doesn't play 90 minutes. Bobby Reed. Oh, he's got a close to a couple 90 minutes there a couple times. Patterson. Nope. He was back in uh, middle of February. So maybe we could kind of sneak that again. There's no reason to play 5.3 when you can play Rawls or you can play Camarasa and they check all the same GPP boxes, if not more than Patterson. Uh, Bakuno is kind of interesting uh, if you can get the start. Uh, but yeah, it, again, up front, uh, same idea. Niasi, no solid minutes. So yeah, there, there just isn't a lot to play when there's no minutes. And again, going back, if West Ham isn't scoring, uh, then we're just get, we're being given the target. That's the target. Cardiff defensive chase. So Cardiff uh, uh, chasing the clean sheet on West Ham. And like I said, this game is just chock full of those 4.5 to 5K guys that I'm really interested in. And uh, it's also chock full of lots of PMR issues on both sides of the field. Lots of minutes. So, yeah, if you're going to use this game, be very careful. Uh, because even Camaras and Raw split the corners. So, if one, if for whatever reason the ball just happens to go out on one side all game, the other guy's not seeing any corners at all. It's a risk, but one or the other does work. And they both can work at the same time. But they just don't correlate enough to stack. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be low scoring, 0-0, zero, zero, uh, 1-1, one, one, maybe 1-0 one Cardiff. I do think Cardiff can win, but that's based off the narrative that West Ham uh, just isn't scoring. So, yeah, I'll say 1-0 uh, Cardiff, 0-0 uh, zero, zero draw. Next game on the slate, we have Bournemouth traveling to Huddersfield. And we really couldn't have two of the worst teams in the league matching up in this one. Uh, Bournemouth, whether you want to look at their recently been really bad or their away form, is the second worst in the league. I'll explain why it's not the worst and it should be the worst uh, when you consider how good they should be. Bournemouth are winless in five straight games. They've lost nine straight away. Nine straight away games, conceding at least twice in each of those nine games. And in five of those nine games, they conceded at least three times. Uh, now, they have scored at least twice uh, in uh, their five previous away games. And they have uh, they have uh, scored in uh, 10 of their 14 EPL away games. Uh, and those games having uh, more than three total goals. So... Yeah, this is a team that is involved with goals, whether on either side. They're riding a back-to-back -back games here of 5 uh, So, Or, excuse me, I think that's actually Watford. Uh, I'll take that back. We'll talk about Watford in a bit. Uh, but, yeah, they've only scored more than once in three of their previous 10 games. So, yeah, this is tough. They're they're not healthy. They're not playing as well, especially away from home. They're playing downright brutal. Uh, but uh, considering Huddersfield is the worst team in the league, by far resounding, indisputable worst team in the league, you can roll with some Bork and GPP in the hopes that he makes um, <clears throat> excuse me minimum three saves, gets the clean sheet, and the win. I think... The further you go down that list, the more unlikely it is to happen. Uh, 
I think three saves is very likely. I think a clean sheet is really likely, but I'm not very sold on a win at all. I would, I'd prefer, I would see this finishing 0-0 zero, zero before uh, it would finish uh, some kind of superior Bournemouth uh, win away from home. Uh, so yeah, I don't mind Boric in GPP, but the issue with him is that he really doesn't have any defensive options. Uh, Nathaniel Klein's floor has really fallen off. <clears throat> So I'm not too interested in uh, looking to use him. And it looks like he may be starting to lose minutes as well. Uh, so I will be looking past the Bournemouth defense this slate. There isn't really much to look at there. Uh, all the midfield is just obscenely expensive. Uh, Stanislas is slowly working his way back. For someone that isn't playing 90 minutes and to pay over 8K is just absurd to me. So I have no interest in Brooks in either format. There's just no point in paying that much. Uh, just spend down a little bit and play Ryan Frazier, who... Who, who who has been at times one of the best players in the league. So, yeah, I, I don't mind someone like Ryan Frazier uh, from 7.9K, but, like, paying 8.1 is just unviable. It's it's giving your money away. And uh, you, I always don't mind someone like Lerma if you're looking for a little bit of floor in the midfield for someone who's really cheap, but far, far, far removed from uh, a viable favorite player of mine. Uh, and up front, we do have Josh King playing from only 6.9K is a really good salary range. And one of the reasons I like Josh King this late is, one, he's probably going to score. And that isn't st as guaranteed propped as otherwise, but he is playing against the worst team in the league. So you, you can expect a little bit. And his salary has been nailed down because in this Basically, he's played four of the eight best teams in the past four games. So you can expect that to hurt a little bit. Not to mention Chelsea as well and Man United in the previous ten. So six of his previous ten games have been against six of the ten best teams in the league. So, yeah, it's it's really tough to judge him on something like that. And we know he's getting a solid 90-minute game. And uh, from 6.9K going up against the worst team in the league, what do you really have to ask for in GPP? Um, is it my favorite? No. Uh, in order for him to hit some kind of ceiling, he will need like a penalty shot or something special. And Bournemouth just aren't good enough away from home to deserve some kind of special event. So, that, that just isn't where I'm necessarily looking in GPP. If you fall on 6.9K for a forward in GPP, by all means, get Josh King in there. Don't feel bad, but don't hunt Josh King this late. Uh, don't hunt Bournemouth in general. In fact, uh, to jump on to the other side of the field here with Huddersfield, uh, Losel makes a lot of sense this slate at only 4.5K. Um, I don't mind that at all. So, yeah, that's just where I would choose to look first in this game. Now, Huddersfield, as mentioned, is the worst team in the league. They've lost 14 of their previous 16 games. They've won only two of their 15 home games this season, losing 11 of those 15 games. However, they did win their last home game. And... Um, the uh, four of their six home games, this uh, four of their six previous home games, have seen at least three total goals. So we can expect some goals here. And like I mentioned earlier with Bournemouth, they are a team that likes to be involved with goals. It's just never necessarily all them doing the scoring. So we may be looking at a little bit of an uptick here for Huddersfield. And uh, coming off their last home win, they may look to rattle off back to back. To, to try and like even out the atrociously bad statistics they've been putting out so far this season. Now, one of the big concerns for me is that they haven't scored <clears throat> more than once at home all season. So uh, that's not a ceiling. And that's, a like I said, a math, massive concern. So we can look at this two ways. Either if Huddersfield gets a result, Bournemouth isn't scoring more than once, meaning Losel is either a great play or a decent play. Or secondly, uh, Bournemouth's going to absolutely shell them. So, <laughs> yeah, um, we should see more than three goals, and or at least three goals, excuse me, and we should uh, see uh, at least one goal for Huddersfield. So a 2-1 Bournemouth victory is pretty relevant. I think I would rather go the other way again. But yeah, Losel is someone you can use this slate for only 4.5K. He's probably 
top five keeper play for me. Um, very close to a top three, uh, but definitely isn't my top keeper play this slate. Now, the midfield's a little bit of a different situation here. Uh, or I should talk very quickly on Drum. Very expensive, but he does have a really solid floor. No real ceiling, though, so I would rather, from that kind of salary, you are starting to look at guys who will have shots at ceiling, and Drum just won't. So, a little bit less of a reason to take Drum in either format this slate. Uh, and then in the midfield, uh, it looks like uh, Hogg will be out. Now, whenever Hogg, is, who is team captain and the defensive midfielder, is out, Aaron Moy drops back as the defensive midfielder and becomes absolutely pointless. Brutally bad, like 2.5 fantasy point ceiling. So, uh, yeah, no reason to take Aaron Moy unless you're chasing a penalty shot. Now, to further that, again, jumping back to these 4.5 to 5K guys, uh, Phil Billing usually jumps up the field. I do, I do like uh, Pritchard, but I don't think he's going to see 90 minutes, which makes him way less of an option for me. Where on the other hand, Billing should see 90 minutes. He has an excellent floor, uh, and uh, as you can see, I wouldn't really read too deeply into that. Uh, but yeah, in terms of as long as uh, Jonathan Hogg is out, Aaron Moy is playing defensively, and Billing is playing offensively, you can rock uh, Philip Billing either format this slate uh, from 4.7k I love it I want some more of it I try so hard uh, but I just can't stop loving it I don't know what it is uh, but it's got these uh, this guy liking it a lot yeah so get some Phil billing into your life this slate 4.7k DraftKings uh, I don't mind it whatsoever going up against one of the league's worst away teams in Bournemouth and uh, finally to uh, touch up here um, Carlin Grant is the new uh, new blood for Huddersfield. He's seeing 90-minute games up front. Uh, hasn't uh, notched uh, the goals in a couple of games here, but uh, honestly, he he's border he's bordering a cash play. Bordering. If he can put up another six plus fantasy points this slate and do it in a fashion that suggests that he's well rounded. He's going to be someone we're going to be able to consider uh, going forward for cash because his salary is never going to change playing on such a bad team like Huddersfield. So, yeah, I don't mind Carlin Grant whatsoever. Uh, if you're going to use him, keep him to GPP, though, this slate. Uh, but Philip Billings definitely up there as one of my favorite underdog sneaky kind of plays this slate that you can get away with. So, yeah, um, it's important to note that as I said, there's going to be goals this game. Um, so I'm not really looking at the keepers for either format, honestly. If I was looking at either keeper, it would definitely be Losel. Uh, both of the games last season, at least one of these, actually in each game, one of the teams had four goals. Uh, and all of these games uh, that the, these teams have ever played against each other have had at least three total goals. Uh, so... Like I said, they're two of the worst teams in the league. It's kind of hard to gauge whether or not they're going to go off or crap out. Uh, neither team should be scoring. That's one way to put it, but uh, both teams should. And I'll be really surprised, but pleasantly surprised, if Huddersfield can do it more than once. So what I'm kind of expecting is a 0-0, 2-1 either way win, probably at Bournemouth. What I'm hoping for is a 3-2 Bournemouth win, a 2-2 draw, or maybe even see Huddersfield win something like 3-1. Uh, that would require something like a penalty shot or a random goal, most likely off the foot of Aaron Moy. Uh, but yeah, I'd uh, rather take someone like Philip Billing, hope to cash in on his 6-8 to eight fantasy points floor on a goal or an assist and send him into double digits, which for either format will help you take down this slate from 4.7K. Philip Billing. So yeah, uh, yeah. Let, let's let's say let's be crazy. Let's say three three two nothing Huddersfield. I like that. Yeah, I like that two nothing Huddersfield. Nice GPP script for you. Next game on the slate, we have Fulham traveling to Leicester. Uh, really interesting game here because, as mentioned, Bournemouth have the second worst away record in the league. Fulham are easily the league's worst away team. And the reason for that is they are yet to win an away game this season. They are still without one, uh, still searching. 
They've lost eight of their last nine. Uh, they've lost 13 of their 15 away games this season. So not only haven't they won away, they, they've simply just lost all but two of them. And they've been clean sheeted in eight of their 15 away games. They've lost five straight, uh, scoring only a goal in two of those five games. So in two games, they scored a goal each. They've, lo- they've also lost five straight away, and uh, they scored a goal in three of their five losses, just the one single goal, and they've lost nine of their last ten uh, EPL away games. Uh, this is the league's worst defense, hands down. They've con- conceded 65 goals in their 29 games this season, which is absolutely absurdly bad. Uh, and they've lost by at least two goals in 11 of their 15 EPL away games this season. So this is a team that we know are really bad they're going to concede a lot and they're going to lose by two goals most of the time so yeah that's we'll look at Leicester here in a second but very quickly they aren't void of options uh slate from slate you can kind of rely on a couple of guys here uh most namely uh Callum Chambers for cash 3.7k have absolutely no issue with that. Uh, probably one of my more liked cash plays. He did score a goal last slate, so that is a little bit heavy duty. But as long as he keeps starting as a center midfielder, I have no problem with Callum Chambers from 3.7K in cash. Uh, to further that, uh, you can use some Tom Kearney as well. Uh, in, I uh, prefer him in GPP, uh, but to cash uh, as well. He does have a fairly solid floor. Uh, his minutes aren't perfect, but he's playing on the right wing. Uh, and he was, for the most of the season, playing as a defensive midfielder. So now that he's on the wing, I do really like his floor from 3.9K. You're really not asking for too much, even if you get 80 minutes from him. That's that's fine. Like when you're looking at someone like uh, the the Cardiff guy for 8.1k uh, and only playing uh, 60 to 70 minutes, that's foolish. Uh, but uh, playing uh, Tom Kearney at 3.9 uh, makes a lot of sense if you're looking to take uh, that risk uh, for the minutes. Uh, but uh, yeah, outside of that, there isn't really much to choose from, mostly because of minutes. Uh, Mitrovic, again, is always one of those guys. He's going to play 90 minutes. Um, his salary is right. His floor is solid. You know he can break slates. He's done it multiple times this season. And he's going up against a team like Leicester, who aren't necessarily a good team. They do have a new manager that they're kind of rolling with right now. We'll talk about that. But, yeah, if you can find a 90-minute guy uh, like uh, Mitrovic in your cards, I wouldn't mind it for GPP. Uh, Same with Kearney. I think you can get away with him in cash or GPP. But if I was to stick to someone from Fulham, it would definitely be using Callum Chambers in cash this slate. Now, uh, for Leicester... It's tough. They've won only one of their previous eight. They've lost six of those eight. And, uh, yeah, they, they've they won only two of their previous ten, losing eight of the ten. So this is a team, again, that they're just not in very good form. Um, their last home game they did win, uh, which snapped a four-game home losing streak. They've lost five of their past eight home games. Now, this is Brendan Rodgers' first home game. Now, you may recognize Brendan Rodgers. He used to uh, be the manager of Liverpool before Jurgen Klopp. Uh, he was in Scotland. I think it was either Celtics, Celtic or Rangers he was with. I can't remember. One of the old firm teams. And uh, he, he is now with Leicester. And... Their first game, uh, he wasn't really the manager. He was there. They literally that day announced him as the manager, and they beat Brighton. Uh, But then they lost last week as well. So, yeah, it's interesting to to, to consider it this slate, at least, that they can come back and uh, to win uh, back-to-back home games. Uh, But from this salary... Smichael's a massive risk, a incredibly massive risk. Uh, just there's no clean sheets to speak of. Uh, the one at Everton. So yeah, uh, in the previous ten, I should say he's just as likely to finish negative as he is to pay off from 5.6k. Just no real reason to take that. Now his midfielders are relevant, or excuse me, his defenders are relevant. It depends who depends who starts on either wing. Could be uh, Christian Folks. It could be uh, Ben Chilwell. 
Uh, Prayer usually starts on the right wing, and he's starting to see 90 minutes, which is pretty awesome, and he does has, have an excellent floor. Uh, so you can rely on someone like uh, Ricardo Pereira this late as a defender uh, when you're looking as uh, for cash options. Uh, but uh, in terms for me this late, uh, my main focus this slate will be around James Madison at 8.3K. Uh, I do have concerns around minutes. You never really know. Uh, bluntly, straightforward, Fulham's really bad. They they would let you or I cross like madmen if we were on the field. We would have double-digit crosses. I don't doubt it. Uh, so legitimately, we can take any player going up against... Uh, Fulham and use them in either format when Fulham's away from home and it just so happens we get Leicester and uh, someone like James Madison who has been consistent double digits as is now I will warn everyone uh, I've had some incredibly bad luck this season long and it seems every decision I make has completely gone backfire, whether it was dropping Hazard and him coming back and scoring goals or holding Han to Salah through forever and nothing. Uh, just bad decisions. James Masson's my captain this slate, and I'm playing my triple, triple captain boost. So there you go. I'm going all in real life James Masson this slate. I'm looking for multiple points, ideally a goal and assist, two goals and assist, a goal and two assists. I'm looking for something completely wonky. Fulham have just been that bad away from home. Now, insider trading here if you want to... Uh, maybe jump on some Fulham to get their first win of the season since uh, my season long has just been an absolute disaster of good decision making. So, yeah, uh, literally anyone on Leicester you can kind of rock with as uh, as long as it's not uh, chasing that clean sheet. Uh, whether it's, uh, you can go Tealman's, uh, your Tealman's and GPP. I really like that from 7K. Uh, Harvey Burns, either format 6K. I prefer it for GPP. Uh, but you could even get away with it in cash if you're really desperate for someone uh, who won't finish zero uh, and getting up against uh, Leicester. Uh, Nidley, 4.4K. Again, if you're looking for someone with a, a really solid floor uh, and you know he's going to get some excellent minutes, uh, I have absolutely no issue with Nidley from 4.4K in cash this slate. Uh up front, Jamie Vardy's in play for me. The Vardy party is in power. The slate for GPP only, 8.4K. My favorite stack this slate for GPP is going to be James Madison and Jamie Vardy foregoing the Man City and Spurs players. How do you like that? That's a little bit of taste for you right there. I think that's a really sneaky stack this slate, uh, especially I haven't got to those bigger names yet. But, uh, yeah, I, that's just where my mind is at this slate. Stack the variety in Mass and GPP. Try and catch the variety party uh, with the plus one if you catch my drift, whether it's uh, Madison, Thielmans, Nidley, just trying to get eight to ten fantasy points, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, Lester. Get in them uh, this slate. Uh, Fulham just allows everyone to do whatever they want. They're so bad away from home that you can basically target Leicester blindly. But it's getting to the point now that it's such old news that uh, maybe jump on some Fulham for a win here. Very possible. Uh, you could even say 2 nothing either way. Uh, I do like it to obviously be a 2 nothing 3-1 Leicester. Uh, whatever it will be, I'm calling uh, Leicester will win this game by at least two goals. That's my prediction. Next game on the slate, we have Everton making the trip uh, over east to Newcastle. Really interesting game this slate. Uh it's tough because uh, these both of these teams offer slate to slate options that you can't correlate. They're very uh, they go at one each other uh, this slate, so you can't really use them. It has to be one or the other, and I usually don't like those slates. Those are tough, so that's why uh, the the board I have up right now is something that I'm really into this slate, uh, just because I think it is off of the norm where a lot of people are going to blindly 
take this game in particular, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. It's just not what I'm going for. So first and foremost, Everton are as bad as Bournemouth away and Fulham away. They're up there or down there, whichever way you want to look at as one of the worst away teams in the league. Uh, they, uh, on the contrary at the moment though, uh, they, they haven't conceded in back-to-back -back games, which is out of the norm for them. Uh, Pickford for, uh, for quite some, some time has consistently been, uh, a let in goaltender and, uh, over the past six games or so he has changed that around. So when we're considering Smichael at 5.6 K or Pickford at 4.7 K, uh, you kind of have to roll up the Pickford, especially when we look at his defensive options of Lucas Digne and Seamus Coleman as being uh, arguably two of the better defensive options across the board. Uh, whether you go uh, Lucas Digne and Cash, uh, which is uh, basically the go-to slate-to-slate cash play, or Seamus Coleman in GPP, who is uh, someone who's always capable of doing uh, lots of uh, different types of defensive production. So on top of that, with a clean sheet, you could really chase down some takedowns to Slate. Now, uh, Everton has won only four of their previous 16 EPL games, and they've won only four of their past 14 EPL games this season. And losing seven so again this is half of their away games this season they've lost uh they've lost six of the previous 10 uh epl away games winning three of those 10 uh now on the contrary like i said they they haven't conceded in back-to-back -back games they've won eight of their previous 10 meetings with newcastle and in eight of those 10 meetings with newcastle one of the two teams uh, was shut out. Uh, so, yeah, that is, again, we're looking at a potential clean sheet to fall on one of these two teams here. Though, yeah, it's like the one's more cash, one's more GPP. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's really tough. Um, Everton has slowly started to turn things around. Uh, but I'm just not as bought in yet. Um all of their recent results, even away, have come against teams that have been in relegation battle already this season. So uh, while that bodes well, as Newcastle was at one point in a relegation battle, uh, that is uh, not necessarily the team away from home you want to jump on. Now, like I said, chase that clean sheet if you want. Uh, Coleman, GPP by himself, Dingye by himself, and Cash. Uh all three in GPP, it works. The thing for me, though, is that Newcastle doesn't allow uh, crosses, uh, which is basically Everton's bread and butter. They allow it shots. And we kind of ran into the situation before, very recently. And uh, we'll bring that up here. And this was the outcome. So... Yeah, uh, it, it's tough for me to say here that uh, you should take Sigurdsson because he likes to cross the ball because Newcastle don't allow a ton of crosses. Where conversely, when games are on the line and Everton need goal scorers, it's usually Sigurdsson who steps up with the goals. And more specifically, Richarlison continues to be one of the easiest fades of the slate uh, until he uh, decides to start doing something uh, that will just ruin you in GPP. And he doesn't have a solid floor for cash. And Walcott just doesn't play enough 90-minute games to be relevant for either format. And uh, their defensive midfielder, same uh, real kind, no production minutes issues. And they don't really have a forward. Uh, again, uh, no solid minutes. Uh if we're judging uh, any kind of trends, maybe we could say uh, Calvert-Lewin's up for a 90-minute game here. But, uh, yeah, outside of that, there just isn't a lot to look at for Everton except for whether the clean sheet chase or maybe he, I would like Sigurdsson. Uh, oh, I can't say in Fandle because they just don't allow a lot of chance, created chances, uh, especially at home. Newcastle's pretty done up. So, yeah, uh, I would prefer just uh, sticking to whether Digne, Cash, uh, Coleman uh, GPP and maybe uh, some pick for GPP. That's probably where I'd stick with my Everton exposure this slate. Uh, so yeah, with Newcastle, Newcastle's uh 
slowly becoming a top 10 team. Uh, they were really brutal to start off the season, but they've turned things around. A lot of that has to do with the bracket. They've won four straight at home, scoring at least twice in each of the four. Uh, to converse that, in contrast, they've they've lost. They or excuse me, they're winless in six straight away. Uh, they've lost only two of their previous seven, and they've got back-to-back -back home game clean sheets and three of them in their previous four home games. Uh, so yeah, instantly Debraca uh, is someone that we can look at as an option, especially where uh, last lady pulled off a minus, which I'm hoping will drop down his ownership uh, to a respectable level this late, where we can get him at 4.6k against a team like Everton, who, like I said, away from home just aren't the same team. Uh, so yeah, six of Newcastle's eight wins this season have come at home. Uh, and in Newcastle games, a team has scored more than twice in only four of those 29 games. So what that's saying is that basically all Newcastle games are extremely low scoring. And whenever we consider that we're getting uh, a a, a goaltender who only four times all season has allowed more than two goals. Um, you kind of have to use him uh, at home for only 4.6K. Is he my favorite? He's definitely in my top three this slate. Uh, but uh, you could get away with some Debraca as a really sharp, low-owned uh, cash option this slate. Now, in terms of defense, obviously, I would prefer to see Shar get more naughty minutes here and be able to sustain his uh, floor, which has been excellent for most of the season. Do I expect a goal? Do I expect a clean sheet? No, not necessarily. But am I looking for him to start getting some more minutes here? Yes, I'm hoping that Fabian Scherr starts to see the, the field for more than 90 minutes. I'll be leaving Debrack as a naked option this slate, uh, but uh, in terms of uh, someone that you can look at, uh, Scherr is definitely in play. Uh, Richie checks all the cash boxes. Uh, same issue, though. Everton don't allow a ton of crosses. They allow shots, which Richie does not take. Uh, Hayden you can use in cash for only 5.5k is kind of like the same uh, really cheap midfielder option. I wouldn't use him in GPP. Uh, I would use Almer on a GPP at 5.4k if I'm looking for a GPP option from Newcastle. I think he's absolutely in play. And maybe uh, it looks like he could be getting some time with a long staff out. Uh, so that could be interesting. And Candy is another guy who's more than capable of doing really incredible things, especially if he gets the start from 3.6K. I know him and Almiron are kind of doing the same position deal right now. So the new guy will usually see the mids in that situation. But I don't mind Candy if he happens to get the start. And to finish it off, uh, one of my favorite GPP plays of the slate, as with most slates, is Salomon Rondon up front at 7.1K. He's just the individual that... That is always going to be low owned has the ability to break a slate and at the same time uh, will never break your bank uh, for salary so yeah I do like him at home 7.1k against a team like Everton uh, Michael Keane has been playing out of this world for Everton the last few weeks so he isn't necessarily a center back I'm looking to target uh, and go up against maybe even use him in uh, a little bit of format play himself uh, but yeah, in terms of, uh, yeah, go Almiron and Rondon as a stack. I really don't mind that, but I definitely prefer the Leicester stack way more. So neither team has scored more than once in three straight versus each other. Everton is an absolute disaster away from home. So you're more than fair to assume they would be on the lesser side of those three total goals. And Newcastle is a much improved team, so we can probably expect them to be on the positive side. Uh, Newcastle should score multiple goals this game. I think Everton will be lucky to score one. I'm going to say 2-1 Newcastle, 2-0 Newcastle. Uh, probably either way, but I'd like to see it the Newcastle side of things. Next game on the slate, we have Spurs traveling to Southampton. 
Uh, so Spurs is in a really interesting situation right now. Their title race is basically done. They played the midweek in a really emotional game where they beat uh, Dortmund, and they're now through to the next round of Champions League. But conversely, domestically, they're uh, winless in three straight, and they've lost back-to-back -back away games. Uh, so this isn't necessarily a team that's coming into the kind of form that would demand the kind of salaries on the kind of slate that we're looking at here this weekend. So, uh, yeah, it just isn't necessarily the first spot that a lot of people are going to go to. Uh, they have won seven of their previous ten versus Southampton and 11 of their 15 away games this season. They've conceded, however, in five of their seven away previous away games. Uh, so, yeah, it's tough to immediately say Loris is a clean sheet option, but... Loris is a clean sheet option. A lot of that rather has to do with uh, real life results as it has to do with Southampton have uh, absolutely nobody as a forward DFS option. Like, period. They have no 90 minutes, no solid players, just not there. So, conversely, we could probably expect Hugo Loris to do pretty well this late from 5.4K. Top three keeper play for sure. Is he my top? Definitely not. Uh, now, in the defense here... Very interesting here with Trippier. It looks like Aria could get the start from 5.5K. He isn't cheap enough in my books at 5.5K, but he is someone that you can use, especially if you're chasing the clean sheet. I don't mind that. Or using him by himself and hoping he can potentially get an assist here and uh, try and carry you in some GPP. Though I do fear his ownership, that is for sure. Uh, so uh, Eric, Erickson and Cash does work. Uh, I don't mind it from 7.8K. I just think there's a lot better options. Even on the other side of the field, you may be able to find some better options. And a lot of that has to do with uh, Harry Kane. Now, if you haven't seen my content yet... Uh, you may want to listen to what I have to say about Harry Kane. If you have been following me, by all means, just uh, skip ahead here to the final game of the slate. But the long and short of it is Harry Kane makes everyone else worse. Uh, there, this works a few ways. Firstly, he's the vocal point of the Spurs attack. And what ends up happening is Spurs boot the ball up field to Harry Kane. He takes the ball down. He either lays it off or tries to turn and kick the ball without taking more than three touches at a time. Uh, that's the Harry Kane special. Now, what that means is that if he's not laying it off to you, uh, you're wasted out there. So uh, nine times out of ten, uh, ten guys are being wasted on the field because Harry Kane just isn't giving it to anyone else. Uh, and he's generally either trying to draw a foul or turn and uh, shoot and just lose it. So, yeah, the, the second part of that is Harry Kane just isn't very good. Uh, and I say very good. Is, is he a talented player? Yes. He probably has an excellent brain for the game, but he is generally boring, flat, not very fast, and completely lacking uh, star skill power uh, in the sense that he can't take the ball down at center, dribble by five players, and go in and score a goal. If someone's literally not kicking him the ball from 30 to 40 yards away and giving him the opportunity to either lay it off or turn and shoot, he's not getting involved. Uh, and more commonly he'll take a penalty shot and score and at the end of the season he'll have 50 odd goals over all his competitions in a calendar year and 38 of them will be from the penalty spot uh so yeah if you're looking to play harry kane uh sure you just have to hope for a penalty shot like james Madison should absolutely crap all over harry kane this slate in terms of raw points value whatever way you want to put it so yeah uh Harry Kane just makes everyone worse. He makes Spurs worse because everyone else around him becomes less effective and overall used. And Harry Kane costs so much and will forever be so highly owned that he's borderline the easy fade most slates. That's tough to say, especially this slate. Uh, but uh, yeah, he just continues to make everyone worse. And that's that's my Harry Kane rant. Uh, so Southampton... Uh, it's tough. They are a team that I want to use. They should be fun to use, but they've won only one of their previous six and three of their previous ten. So they aren't necessarily a team that goes out and win games. Now, they have scored in seven of their previous eight games and nine straight home games. So we can't expect a, go a goal here uh, crushing the Hugo Lloris um the Hugo Lloris clean sheet, which uh, got him up to 24 fantasy points over the midweek in Champions League. So uh, the Southampton have lost three of their past four and three of their previous three of their past four games and three of their previous six home games as well. 
Uh, so they aren't necessarily coming into he- this game as a results-based team, but they should do enough to break clean sheets on the other side of the field. Uh, Gunn is always in play. It basically doesn't matter who he's playing. Uh, again, if you are new to my content, I'll give you my Angus Gunn spiel. If you know about Angus Gunn because you've heard me talk about him, just skip ahead here to the next game because you know what's going to come. But basically, Angus Gunn has been surrounded by the generation and generation and generation of the best English Premier League keepers and coaches. Uh, you could not find a better pedigree maybe ever for an English Premier League goaltender, maybe ever for an English Premier League player player his it's just the the list goes on and on and he is a winner and he is talented coming from man city so eventually he is going to break through here uh for the time being 4.2k against the spurs team you can use this in gpp and hope the spurs don't score more more than two goals and he makes at least eight saves if that happens then you'll be flying from only 4.2k this slate now, uh, Bertrand is a little bit too expensive, uh, so I'm not necessarily jumping on that uh, from 4.9. And Target's way too expensive against Spurs, um, whichever ends up starting. And if Valerie does get the start on the other side, he's just too expensive. Uh, 4.5K. Uh, I don't mind it for cash. He does have a good enough floor, but I think there's some better options for spending down or spending up, uh, whether it be Chambers or Prayer or Dingye kind of situation. Now into the midfield, uh, we can see a few different options here. Uh, James Ward-Prowse is an excellent play from 8.2K. Is he my favorite? No, I prefer Madison from that 8-point whatever range, but uh, he's got good. Ward-Prowse has got goals uh, and assists in uh, much of his games lately. He's playing very well, so I have no issue with him. But I prefer if anyone on Southampton, I would rather go with Holberg. 5.1k in that sauce range I was talking about has an excellent floor if he happens to hit a ceiling which he's been coming really close to the past few games uh, you'll be absolutely destroying people from 5.1k very low on this slate uh, whether for cash or GPP and he works in both now like I mentioned earlier one of the better reasons to use Loris is because of the absolute lack of options for Southampton up front uh, Charlie Austin, not seeing 90 minutes, not a very good player. Shane Long, not seeing 90 minutes, a very substandard forward. These two have scored maybe two or three goals in their entire past couple of th- two or three years of a uh, competitive, uh, whether domestic and international play. So, yeah, this just isn't the pairing that you should be looking to go and look for goals. And conversely, that's why James ward Prowse has been scoring so much and why I like Holberg is because these guys tend to knock it back to the midfield and they shoot it on net. So, yeah, that's where I'm looking for the for the uh, the f- easy fade on the forward and using Southampton. But as a whole, this is a pretty frustrating game. Uh, Southampton could find a result but they're very limited for their dfs results uh bad scripts for you to really shoot for if you're looking for southampton in a lot of cases you're looking for them just to to screw over over other teams rather than do really well so that isn't necessarily the place to go looking uh so they do have uh there is i should say in Seven of the ten meetings between these two sides, there's been at least three total goals. And both teams have scored in eight of their previous ten games. Uh, So, uh, yeah, lots of goals. Uh, Let me rephrase that last point. Sorry, I I restated that. In the previous ten games, these two teams have played against each other. In seven of the ten games, there was three total goals. In eight of the ten games, both teams scored. There we go. I got that time. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, uh, separate, not playing each other, just in their previous 10 games that they've been playing. So both teams should score this game, though. I like Gunn to have the better shot at the clean sheet. And uh, I do like uh, Spurs probably to score more than once, but not uh, more than uh, twice. Like, see, I'll be surprised to Three probably being their absolute max ceiling, and with that would probably require a, pe- uh, a penalty shot by Harry Kane. So yeah, I'll say a 2-1-3-1 Spurs win, uh, but I'd really like to see it go the Southampton way. Final game of the slate. We have Watford making the trip to Man City. What an incredible game this is going to be. Watford are coming into this on tip-top form. 
Uh, they've only lost two games this calendar year. Uh, they've lost only one of their previous five, winning three of those five, and they've lost only three of their previous ten away games. So uh, their games have seen three or at least three total goals in six of their previous ten, back-to-back five goal games, whether it's them scoring or losing 5 nothing, and uh, in four of their eight uh, previous games, they've seen at least four total goals as well. So we're looking at a team that's scoring and letting in lots of goals. Uh, they've never beaten City in the Premier League. And uh, basically, really the place to start a lot of the builds this slate is, if you think, I, I said this last slate and it turned out really badly against Liverpool, if you think City will score less than two, take Ben Foster. If uh, you think City will score more than two, just keep moving on. Uh, so... Yeah, that, he is a world-class keeper. He's just playing Man City. Uh, so we'll talk about City here in a minute, but that's just something to consider. Uh, I would rather take Holobos over uh, Jan Matt just because City don't allow crosses at all. So Jan Matt makes his uh, points in lots of different ways. Holobos does not. Um the midfield, I think this could be interesting to find something in the midfield here. Whether it's a Decor or a Pereira uh, getting a goal or assist here, I do really like that a lot. I think that could swing massively in GPP uh, if you happen to catch a goal from either of those. And uh, Delefeo does have the kind of skill set to go out and win or get a goal in these games. So yeah, I don't mind him... Uh, I'd prefer Delfeo's skill over Dini's role as a penalty shot taker. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, don't sleep in Man City to break a clean sheet this late, especially when we consider that's basically all Man City have been doing lately. They've won five straight, won back-to-back games, won nothing. So that's the first tick for them to have lower ceilings as of late. They haven't conceded in four straight, so they haven't really needed to score a lot of goals. And they've lost only one of their 15 EPL home games this season, winning 14 of the other 15 games. And they've conceded only 11 goals in their 15 home games this season, scoring a ridiculous 50 goals in their 15 home games. Uh, They've won seven of the previous nine meetings versus Watford, and they've had at least four total goals in eight of their previous 11 EPL home games this season. So, again, it's City. Like, this is old news. It should be old news at this point. Uh, But my concern is that what if City isn't scoring as much right now? They're hosting Schalke this midweek for Champions League. They may be looking past this and rely on another 1-0 win. So I don't mind Ederson. I think he makes sense this slate from 6K, even from that salary. I don't mind it because he is going to see more than enough saves to offset, uh, and there really shouldn't be much to offset. Danilo works as well for uh, either uh, cash or GPP. I prefer him for cash. Uh, but uh, maybe you can chase him and Ederson and GPP as a really high salary, low owned defensive stack. Um, into the midfield, it's tough to know what to do here with uh, Kevin De Bruyne out. It's going to open a door, obviously. They desperately need Fernandinho out, uh, back. Now, I've been talking about this the past few. Uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, give me one second here. Let's uh, let's jump that back. Hmm. You know what? Let's just do that. There we go. That'll work. So, yeah, didn't want to, everyone to see uh, what was being built there. So, yeah, uh, needless to say, uh, we're looking at a situation here where Fernandinho has been out for a while. And I'll just blatantly say it, as Fernandinho has been out, City has not been the same team. And this isn't something new. This, this has been multiple seasons on the go now. So Fernandinho is a massive point to City success. And without him, City do not succeed. So, yeah, that's a really big concern for me going forward here and a huge reason why, uh, again, I'm not so high on a Man City ceiling, attacking ceiling, and I'm more up on their defense. So, yeah, uh, is it to say Aguero can't do anything? No, absolutely not. But the second part of that is... Uh, Gabriel Jesus is coming back to full health. So he's going to be taking minutes away from Aguero. Uh, Mares is seemingly coming on now for De Bruyne, which 
Sure, why not? And he comes on and breaks his floor in almost no time. Uh, Sané has been absolutely garbage as of late after being like the cash lock for City for most of the season. Sterling hasn't been as good uh, as of late either, and his salary is starting to show it. So maybe if you're looking for someone to use for cheap, Sterling does work, but he's still 8.8k. You can spend down at 6k or 6k or 600 less. Go with Madison, or I guess 500 or less, excuse me. Go with Madison. Have just as much uh, ceiling and a way better floor, let alone uh, tons more roll check boxes. So, yeah, uh, Sterling isn't bad, but they're just not the same, same team with Fernandinho, which makes me like Foster a little bit as a value keeper this slate and someone I will be chasing. I really don't mind it. So, yeah, uh, final score here uh I'm gonna say one nothing city again. Go three streaks, three straight games of one nothing city games. It's hard to see them going full throttle for a million goals, uh, though they are always capable. And it's hard to see them conceding, though they are always capable of doing so. So yeah, I'll say a, a two one two nothing one nothing city win. Uh, I'll be surprised if there's more than three total goals. Uh, they're gonna be looking past this. Let's say that. So yeah, that is the slate, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry about that little drop down at the end. You can drop back a little bit to uh, see my kind of offset cash card that I'm going this slate that includes no Man City and uh, no uh, no uh, uh, Spurs. Uh, let's uh, actually rebuild it here again uh, because uh, just a little quick jump through. There's uh, nobody really to use if you want uh, for cash there. Uh, I do like Philip Billing. Wait, there was. Uh, you can use uh, Rawls if he gets the start. James Madison is my top play this slate, all around top play. Uh, Callum Chambers for cash as well. Uh, who else? Debraca as uh, one of my uh, top cash goaltenders this slate. Uh, you can use Angus Gunn as well. Who was my other? Uh, yeah, the defender. Uh, I would go either Pereira or Lucas Digne. Maybe even Danilo, though. His starting isn't as uh, solid as I would like. So I'd probably go uh, Lucas Digne. Or excuse me, I'd probably go Pereira this slate uh, up against Fulham. Uh, you can even drop down and use Serge Ure if you really want to. But like I said, up against Fulham. Uh, there's just no reason not to use someone like Pereira. And then up front, you're still left with 9K each way, uh, which means you can use someone like Sigurdsson and you're still not breaking the bank for whichever way you want to go with that. Because honestly, I don't really like Callum Chambers that much now that I'm thinking about how bad Fulham are away from home. So yeah, I may even want to do a little... A little Sigurdsson, a little Dingye. There you go. That's not that bad. Uh, then you can drop down really low uh, or even... There we go. So, yeah, that's a, I think that's a, a really viable uh, go with right there uh, because there are uh, some forward options down here that you can use in cash uh, that uh, won't ruin you if they only get six fantasy points. Uh, for example, Carlin Grant. Mitrovic is in that same kind of field, but I obviously wouldn't use him with uh, the Leicester guys. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. I really do appreciate it. Rotopros.com, get over, check us out, sign up, join the Slack. Uh, articles, top right-hand corner, drop down. We have tons of content for all sorts of different sports. Uh, really excellent work that we're doing over here. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, uh, RadRobDiamond. Find me on uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, Sir Robert Six. Send me an invite if you want to play some low-level cash games. Uh, I, I don't usually like playing a higher level against people just because I... I well, 
there's lots of reasons, but I try to be friendly about it. And uh, to further that, uh, by all means, uh, comment, like, subscribe. Please get us here. So yeah, thank you very much for everyone. Good luck this week. Good luck this weekend. Much love, and uh, hopefully see you at the top of the leaderboards. Take care.